ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد all praise is due to allah we praise him we seek his aid and we ask for his forgiveness we seek refuge in allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah the Almighty alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his servant and his messenger. يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَّبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah and we shall test you, try you with some of fear and a loss in souls, meaning death, and a loss and scarcity of food, fruits, and blessings. And give glad tidings to those who are patient. Those who are patient in the face of all of this loss and all of these trials and calamities. This is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That humanity, we humans, shall go through these kind of trials, tests, um, lack of resources and blessings. But Allah promises also glad tidings and good news to those who remain patient in the face of these trials and hardships. And Allah explains further the inner workings of these people. Allah says, because these people, when the trials, when hardships come to them, they resort to a, an understanding, to a faith, a firm belief, to a very powerful foundation within them. And that is, in, in, in truth, we belong to Allah. We are Allah's. We are Allah's property. We belong to Him. Meaning, we don't even own ourselves, we don't belong to ourselves, we don't have an existence, an independent existence of our own. We belong to Allah, He owns us. As Allah says, Allah describes Himself as Malikin Nas, the owner, the king of humanity. He owns us, we belong to Him. And the owner has the right to do whatever he wants with his property. So Allah has the right to do with us whatever he wants and we don't have a right to question or ask and also 
in the realization that we are the property of Allah, that we don't even have an existence, independent existence of ourselves, there is a relief, an, es an escape from the grip of pain and the hardship of trials. When we realize that our existence is, is not intrinsic, it's not independent, that is actually dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning we have this kind of temporary existence and also the pain that we go through, the trials that we suffer are also temporary. And this lessens the pain of the trials. Inna lillah qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. And not only that, they also say the inner workings is that and we are going to return to Allah. Eventually, this shall pass, as they say. This will be over. And it's not going to last forever. And we are going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a transitory state. This is an ephemeral experience. It's not going to stay here forever. It's temporary. And just the realization that it's temporary brings about a lot of relief. And the realization that eventually we're going to return to Allah when every, all the records will be set straight, everything will be fixed. That's even a greater source of relief. And these are not just statements that believers, people who trust in Allah, these are not only statements that they say at the time of hardship and trials. But this statement is a reflection of the state of their heart. That's how they see the world. That's how they understand themselves. And this is where ease comes about. And this is a reflection of the meaning where Allah, of the divine statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَىٰ إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَىٰ Indeed, with every hardship there is ease. This is the ease. It's in the inner experience. It's in the grasping of the truth of our existence. And pain grows exponentially when the person is self-centered. When people grow extremely sensitive and prone to pain, when they magnify their own existence and they think it is the center of the world, they think they are the center of the world, their pain grows. So humans do a great disservice to themselves when they think life is about them. When they think life is supposed to treat them as kings and honor them and fulfill their wishes. When humans think this way, life becomes extremely painful and full of suffering. And subhanAllah, in the diminishment of one's sense of self, there is freedom and relief. Whereas in the emphasis of one's own centrality in the universe and the importance of one's self, humans incur a lot of pain, unnecessary pain and suffering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises the believers in the face of one of the most difficult experiences humans could ever go on, that's the prospect of death, of being murdered and killed in the battlefield. Allah says, instructs the believers to say, and this is again when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises or instructs the believers, He instructs them with saying something or praises them for saying a certain thing. It's not about this statement. The statement is an expression of something that is in their hearts, that is at the core of their being. Say nothing will befall us but what Allah wrote for us. This realization that things come from Allah and that it's not about us, it's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This lessens the pain. Allah also speaks to the believers about the suffering that they undergo as they are in their struggle against the forces of evil in the world. Allah says, In takunu ta'alamun, fa innahum ya'alamuna kama ta'alamun, wa tarjuna min Allahi ma la yarjoon. If you are experiencing pain, they are also experiencing pain, similarly. But the difference is, you live in hope for something from Allah that they have nothing similar to. They have no similar experience of hope. So although you are going through pain, that they are going through a similar pain, you have another asset that could actually remove your pain completely sometimes. And that's, you have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are expecting something from Allah that they do not expect. And that sometimes renders your pain almost non-existent. Non 
And humans commit this grave mistake of thinking that ease is a symbol of honor and a manifestation of goodness unconditionally. And this is wrong. And Allah points to that. Allah says in the Quran, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا كَلَّا Allah says man, humans, when Allah tries them, tests them with generosity, blessings, Humans assume that Allah has dignified us and ordered us, treated us well. And when Allah tries humans with lack and hardship, then man says that Allah has disgraced me. Then Allah says, no, that's not true. That's not true. The Prophet ﷺ also clarifies, in Allah يُعْطِي الدُّنْيَا لِمَنْ يُحِبْ that Allah gives this dunya to those that he loves and those that he doesn't love. وَلَا يُعْطِي الْإِيمَانَ إِلَّا لِمَنْ يُحِبْ And he only gives iman and faith to those that he loves. So when someone is given plenty and abundance in this world, it doesn't mean that Allah loves them. It doesn't mean that Allah has honored them. This dunya is not worth the wing of a mosquito. It's an insignificant thing. لو كانت الدنيا تساوي عند الله أو تعدل عند الله جناح بعوضة ما سقى منها كافرا شربة ماء as the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said. If this life was worth the weight of a wing of a mosquito in the sight of Allah, he wouldn't have given a disbeliever even a sip of water from it. But it's worth nothing. This world, this worldly life in all of its details and its intricacies is just a tool, an instrument to elicit the reality of human beings. What's inside of every human being. That's the reality of this life. And its value is in fulfilling this purpose. That's it. But it has no intrinsic value of its own. And this is why when it fulfills the purpose behind its design, it will collapse. It will disappear. It will cease to exist. Because its value and its existence is conditional on the purpose for which it was created. And when that purpose is fulfilled, there is no need for it to be here. So it is annihilated completely. Actually, the Prophet ﷺ goes further and he says, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا أَصَابَ مِنْهُ If Allah loves a servant, a human being, then Allah, meaning takes from them, meaning Allah befalls them with some loss, with some pain, with some hardship, with a trial, with inconvenience. And sometimes it's even extreme. And the level and the degree of the pain, of the predicament, of the trial, of the, of, of, of the pain and the lack, it's actually, actually proportionate to the level of faith and iman. The Messenger وسلم, says in another authentic hadith, أشد الناس بلاء الأنبياء يبتل المرء على حسب دينه فإن كان في دينه صلابة اشتد بلاءه وإن كان في دينه رقة ابتلي على قدر دينه أشد الناس بلاء الأنبياء ثم الأمثل ثم الأمثل فالأمثل الأمثل The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم says the people who receive the severest Trials and tests are the prophets because these are the pinnacle of faith, the highest level of iman and faith. Then those who are nearby in iman, the closest to them in faith, 
the highest ranking believers, those who are high in their iman. A man or a person will be tried in accordance or proportionately to their level of faith and iman. So if there is strength and solidity in their faith, their trial and their test will be severe. But if there is weakness in their iman, there is fragility in their iman, then they will be tried accordingly. So the general uncommon notion that ease in life is a sign, is a good sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completely nullified and refuted in Islam. It's not true. It's, it's a false impression. It's a false impression. And if, as we reflect on the Qur'an, the humans throughout human history who experienced the most challenging trials were the prophets, and the Qur'an is full of their stories. From the time of Adam alayhi salam, he's tried with his own weakness in Jannah first. Then he's tried with being taken out of paradise, which is an extremely painful transition, and placed here on earth. And then afterwards, the murder that took place at the hands of one of his own sons. One of his sons kills his own brother. And then prophets and messengers afterwards. Noah alayhi salam. Then all of the subsequent prophets and messengers. They were challenged. They had to go through extreme trials and pain and opposition by their people. They never led an easy life. Many of them were killed, were executed for the sake of the truth. So an easy life or a life of luxury and abundance is not a sign or a symbol of Allah's acceptance or of an honoring from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not indicative of that. It's only indicative of a, a test. And Allah tries us with ease and hardship, with good and evil. And we know that nothing comes from Allah but good. Allah says in the Quran, describing Himself, al khair, that good is in your hands. The Prophet says, He praises Allah and He says, An evil can never be ascribed to you, can never be ascribed to you. Evil doesn't come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cannot be ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although in the creation of Allah, there is a resultant evil. There is a resultant evil. But it's not ascribed to Allah. What comes from Allah is good. Allah, the Prophet ﷺ describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, Inna Allah tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. That Allah is good and he only accepts that which is good. So what we describe as evil is a matter of perspective. It's from our no, small and narrow perspective, from the window through which we look at the huge creation of Allah that we call existence. It's incomplete, it's a perspective. It's a standpoint. It's a viewpoint. And it's incomplete. And it's relative to ourselves. And we are okay. It's all right for us to describe something as good or evil as it pertains to us, as it relates to us. That's just normal. That's just normal. But for us to ascribe evil to Allah is inappropriate and injustice and completely untrue. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way He creates, the way He provides is good. But in the details, in the way the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aligned in reality, especially when there is interference of human choice, there is evil. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives humans physical capacity, ability, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided humans, for, for example, to be able to manufacture a knife, let's say, sharp objects, that's good. The fact that Allah gave humans this will and freedom of choice and the sense of volition and, and autonomy is good. 
The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human body in a way that is adaptable, that is changing, and that keeps growing, and that's it's organic, is good. But when you put all of that together and someone uses one of those in the wrong fashion, a murderer killing an innocent person unjustly, that's where evil comes from. It's in the choice of humans. It's in the choice of humans. So we have to be careful not to ascribe evil to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although Allah creates everything. But it's the window of choice that Allah gave humans. This is the source of some of the experiences that we call evil. But eventually, in the grand scheme of things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make even that evil, that situational evil, Allah will make it amount to something that is a greater good. And that's part of the wisdom and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any kind of evil in the world is a matter of perspective. It doesn't mean it's not real. It's real. But again, it's an evil because it works, it's, it works against our desires and against our health and against what we want, against what we, what we feel is or what we think is optimal for ourselves. So it's important. And the reason I'm, I'm bringing all of this is about because you can see social media and conversations are full of Muslims describing this past Gregorian year, 2020, as evil the worst year in their life. And we are glad that it's over. As if 2020 is a creator. As if it is responsible for what happened in it. And a Muslim attaches their heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they see goodness from Allah. And they know there is evil in the world. That it is the consequences of human choice and action. And if there is some evil that doesn't seem to be the product or the direct product of human action and choice, then it is something that brings about greater good. And if there is some kind of harm or pain in it, it's insignificant compared to the good that Allah brings about through it. That's how we see the world. And sometimes humans have this naive approach or naive expectation about life. They think life is supposed to be perfect. We humans are supposed to be perfect. Conditions are supposed to be perfect. In reality, and again, this is a perspective, because in reality, this world is perfect. It is perfect. It's perfect for the purpose that Allah created it for. Allah created this world to test us. And that's what it does perfectly. But perfection from our selfish perspective as humans, we want the world to serve us. We want the world to give us our wishes. So we describe it as, as, as imperfect because it does not serve our own selfish, self-centered wishes. But this whole perspective is off. Because this is not why the world came about. It's not meant to be paradise for you. So it's not wise to ex expect this world to be perfect in the sense that it should be identical to paradise because it was not meant for that in the first place. And this puts our hearts at ease. The world is just perfect at doing and serving the purpose for which it originated by Allah. And in this sense it's perfect. And this human yearning for perfection in sense of circumstances and blessings is a genuine one, but it's misplaced. It should not be attached to this worldly life because it was not meant to be that. This is our yearning for paradise. And this, this, kind, of, this kind of yearning should be the motivational drive that keep us loyal to Allah, keep us obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keeps us patience through this transitional life that we are going through. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله 
وأصحابه أجمعين وبعده As we live this life, we have to realize it's a gift from Allah. It's an honor to be chosen, to be brought into this world, to be given this amana and this trust, and to go through that, this, this life with all of its ups and downs, and to have access to knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have access to loving Allah, to have access to being able to stand in His presence and connect to Him and wish for his meeting and to live in devotion to him it's a great opportunity and it's a grave ingratitude from humans to live completely negligent of this wishing for this world to treat them as gods or as kings and by the way most of the pain in life comes from this kind of expectation there's a lot of unnecessary pain in this world. And a lot of the injustice and the oppression that takes place in the world actually comes from people who are obsessed with an impossible view of the world that they want, they want it to serve them and, and treat them as, as lords. Whereas they miss out on the opportunity the great opportunity to know Allah, to advance on the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to go through the trials and the hardships and to surmount all of the obstacles on the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where a believer on the day of judgment, when they are given their results, when they are given their book in the right hand, this person cries out in joy and happiness and they say, Ha umuqra'u kitabiyya he turns to all of humans and he say, Hey, all of you, look at my book. That's it. That's the ultimate success. There's no pain after that. There's no suffering after that moment. There is no disappointment after that. You're going to transition after that to the world that was created for perfection, where there is no evil, no pain. No downside at all. Everything is perfect, complete, and good. And that's why Allah created humanity. But Allah wanted them to choose to be there. As opposed to the rest of the creation, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give them choice. Allah chose for them to serve a purpose. But Allah gave humans and jinn the choice to enter paradise by choice. To love Allah by choice. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not force people to believe. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَآمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا أَفَأَنْتَ تُكْرِهُ النَّاسَ حَتَّى يَكُنُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ If your Lord so willed, He would have guided everyone on earth. But that's not the point of this creation. So sometimes as people who strive to to hold on to our Iman. We are frustrated as pe at people as they express their disbelief. But that's the choice Allah gave. When we see that, we should admire the fact that Allah guided us, that Allah allowed us to even struggle and strive to hold on to Iman, try our best despite our weaknesses, despite our shortcomings and our proclivity for evil. We should be thankful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to go through this life with His divine support and guidance. And we should not take that for granted. And we should stop trying to judge what happens in our lives. Everything in this world is designed to help you come to Allah. If you see it, if you interpret it through the right perspective, everything starts to work for you. To bring you to Allah meaning. Because that's what for you means. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us align our hearts with His wisdom and to, be, to humble ourselves before His majesty and before His divine will and to help us appreciate His gifts, the ones that are apparent and the ones that are hidden. Allah, the ones that are hidden. Allahumma ghafir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. Allahumma ghafir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina. ثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن لهم حق علينا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين 
اللهم أبرم لهذه الأمة أمر رشد يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويهدى فيه أهل معصيتك ويعمل فيه بكتابك وسنة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين